Hi. Hi, Emma. I'm Leah. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much for chatting with me. Of course. Thanks for having me. Um, I, I love this movie. I screened it with my sister, and we just fell in love with it. Um, and it, you root for, like, all of the characters. Like, you can't help but love all of them, which I love about this. I love that you say that, because I feel like every single character in this film, down to Paul's mom, has a very unique and distinct story, and yeah. you're very curious about what happens next. I love that. Yeah, it's like, even the teacher, I was like, okay, I love you, especially when she's like, because otherwise I have to read the essays that they all wrote. <laughs> she and, and um, Becky, who plays her, is such a badass, too. She's exactly like Mrs. G. So what was it about the script that, when you got it, you were like, I have to do this? This is... Well, when I first got the script, um, actually, even before the script, I just got the log line, which was a couple sentences, um, and I, th I think it was, shy introvert Ellie Chu is wooed by Jock Paul into writing a letter to Astor Flores, popular girl, and I was like, okay, this is cool, like, I love this stuff, and yep. then I saw, um, I forgot specifically what it said, but it was like, and then has feelings for a girl, and I was like, what? You're like, was, twist. Yeah, and I, I could not read the script faster. I, I literally clung on to every single word, and I just saw this whole world that Alice painted, this kind of small town place called Squamish. It kind of felt like a little, uh, like a fairy tale, almost, like its own little, its own yeah. little thing. Um, it's kind of like I, I stand still there, too. <laughs> <laughs> right? But um, I was immediately drawn to the script, and I remember thinking to myself, like, oh my god, I love Ellie Chu. Um, also because she is not, like, I'd say your typical main character. And typical meaning, uh, you know, like what the normal main character is, like loud, kind of out there, a little more confident in her skin. And I think that's what I loved most about it. It was like just a really grounded, natural story about this girl just finding her sexuality and finding her voice. Yeah, and I love that the whole thing is like at the forefront, you're like, oh, it's the jock and the popular girl. But when you actually like watch the movie, it flips everything on its head, which I think is so beautiful. And especially telling different kinds of love. Like, I, w I found myself rooting for Ellie and Astor, of course, but also Ellie and Paul, because I was like, I love their friendship so much. And it was just, you don't get to see that, especially with female and male friendships. And like, they're kind of soulmates in a way too, which was really beautiful. And I think too, like, that is kind of why, I mean, that's one of the main things I love about this movie is that it encourages that platonic love and that friendship it's not all about the romance. You know, I feel like a lot of movies and um, rom-coms have set it up like this is supposed to be what things are. And then we actually experience love and it's something completely different. And you're like completely blown out of the water because we're so used to thinking that you have to end up with a guy or, I mean, in any other case, end up with the girl or whatnot. Yeah. But speaking on the topic of Ellie, Paul, and Aster, it's cool because you see, quote, the jog, quote, the nerd, quote, the pretty girl, but all these three characters have so many other layers to them, and they're not just the nerd, and they're not just the jock, it's not just the pretty girl, they're all actually very, you know, confused. Yeah, Well-rounded, yeah. Multi-layered, yeah. Yeah, which is amazing. Um, so Ellie's parents talk about the best parts in songs and movies. What was the last great song or movie that you heard or saw, and what was the best part of it? Um, the last great song that I listened to was, oh my gosh, it's called Older Than I Am by Lennon Stella. Okay. And, um, it, the, the best part of this song is a part where she says, I do my own healing. And this song essentially is basically about being older than you are and going through, going through things that maybe you wouldn't really go through, like through your teenage years or, you know, just, I think, like, yeah. for these people's souls. And when she says, like, I do my own healing, I just, like, every time I listen to that song, I lose it, because it's like, oh, That's such a powerful line. It's like, we all yeah. need to be able to do that, for sure. Totally. And every time I hear that, I mean, I listened to it this morning, and I gave myself a good cry for no reason. So. You need a good cry sometimes. I totally do that, too. Especially, I pick a, like, TV show episode, and I'm like, sometimes when I need a good cry, I just put on, like, Grey's Anatomy, an episode of that. Oh, like, you know, that just, it's cathartic. What like, is your, what is your go-to cry song? Oh, God. I think Taylor Swift's Clean. 
Um, I just oh found that God. one so that's powerful. Kind of like, that's kind of like a senior version of Breathe by her. Yes, it is. Like, I feel like, I you know that. <laughs> yes, yes. It's like an evolution of that song. And I feel like she's yes. in such a better place during it. And oh my God, I saw that live and I was just crying in the audience. Like, it was so, I'm like, the point in my life too, where is that? Like, I feel like songs are so great with that. And this movie does that really well too, is being like, put, being set in high school, every feeling is like the end of the world but really it's just the beginning for these characters, which I think is really Totally, cool. and I think too, even though high school does kind of feel like the end of the world, I know everything. Yes. I remember like, I was like, oh my God, Johnny texted me, like, what am I gonna do? You like, freaking about I, all this stuff, and then you grew up, <laughs> I don't remember what it was that I was freaking out about. Like, <laughs> exactly, but I still think that there, it's still important, and it still holds a lot of weight to it, because I feel like in high school, things are so big, because you're experiencing them for the first time. Exactly. So like me in high school being like, oh my God, Johnny texted me. Even though now I'm like, okay, well, who Johnny texted me. Back yeah. then it was like the coolest thing ever because it was the first time experiencing it. And then likewise, what do you think one of the best parts of the half of the time? There were so many scenes I loved. Ooh, okay. If you could pick. So, I think there are three best parts. Am I allowed to say that? Yes. Okay, so I think the first best part, I'll go in order of sequence. Oh my god, wait, there's four best parts. <laughs> there's, there's so <laughs> many scenes that I love. I'm like, oh my god. Okay, so I think one of my favorite, okay. First, one of the best parts is the dating scene where I'm in the car as Ellie, yes. and yes. I'm like texting everyone, and I think Daniel's reaction to everything is easily one of the best parts of the film. Him being like, what are you doing? Yeah. That's one of them. Another one is, uh, for me, I think when, these are not in chronological order, my bad. Yeah. When Paul Munsky pulls Ellie off the bike, because that is the very beginning <laughs> of them. It's like the essence of them, really. <laughs> really? I mean, who, who the heck pulls somebody yeah. off of a bike? Like, <laughs> Just seeing how serious Ellie was in that moment and seeing how casual that was for Paul, yeah. those two actions completely just explain where those characters begin at the beginning of the movie. Yeah. Um, another really good part, so these these are my top two. These are my top two. Okay. The moment where Aster does say, is this the best part? Oh, I just get chills thinking about that when we're in the hot tub and she recognizes something that Ellie and her mother share together. It's like, as her just knew, yeah. that was the best part. And I feel like that was such a big moment of, like, silent connection. Like, we don't really have to talk about the best part, but we can both know that it that's is the best it. part. Yeah. And then last but not least, um, when Paul and Ellie say goodbye in the end. Yes, the train scene. I think that, yeah. okay, I have to, I know I just took you around, like, a 10-minute best part. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of best parts in this movie. There's like, a lot of really, yeah, because they're all, like, really, really special one-off moments. Yeah. But I think this one is the most special because it really just shows the growth of the two. Yeah. You know, Ellie accepting that he is doing this, what she thought to be an idiotic thing um, yeah. a couple of scenes ago. Yeah. And Paul really embracing that. And, like, I just feel like it really, really wraps up full circle. And just that moment of those saying goodbye, it's kind of like, it's like the beginning of the end. Like, yeah, I after love that. that scene, yeah. yeah, after that scene, it's like the whole world opens up for everybody. I feel like that's the best part. And then this film it gives so much good advice to be authentic, be yourself, make the bold stroke, which is another scene mm -hmm. that I really loved. Um, what are you hoping that is something people take away from this? Well, I hope that people in high school or people of any age watch this and see a bit of themselves. You know, there are so many different situations that kind of happen in this film that have to do with finding your own unique voice, mm -hmm. finding friendship in the most unlikely places, finding your way back to your family in the most unlikely of ways. Um, and I hope that people, you know, can kind of relate to that and also not feel alone when they are kind of struggling through, you know, confusing situations, just like Ellie and Paul and Aster. And also, I kind of hope that, no, I don't kind of, I really hope <laughs> 
that this encourages people to make their bold strokes in their life, whatever that may be, even if it's yes. getting up tomorrow morning and working out for the first time in two weeks, something that can encourage someone to kind of step out of their comfort zone in like a healthy way and, you know, get over their fears and come out into their skin a little more. Yes, I love that. Okay, to end, I want to do something kind of fun. Um, where is the chat box of this thing? I'm going to, I pulled some photos from your Instagram and Twitter, um, and I wanted to know what the story was behind them. Um, so this is the first one. Let's see if she'll let me send this. Um, it's you and Paul um, in a gymnasium, I think. Uh -huh. probably, I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this picture is of Daniel and I Paul and Ellie. Mm -hmm. um, we're actually in a little studio in New York, the Ripley Greer Studios, and Alice did this activity with us fairly often, actually, and she just had us talk to each other and naturally kind of get each other's movements, and it was kind of like fake ping pong with a hacky sack, but she was really just trying to get um, us being comfortable, yeah, with the movement, with chatting with each other, and really focusing on each other and having the hacky sack kind of be like a second thought, which at the time I was like, what are we doing? And after I'm like, Oh, I get it now. <laughs> yes. Yes. I love that. Okay. I just have two more. Um, this one as well, which I think was when you guys wrapped maybe the three of you, it looks like you're in a street together. Oh my God. Okay. So this is the first night actually before we even started shooting that we all went out to dinner with um a producer right i mean alice is the writer and director yep. <laughs> yeah. basically the whole team and we were standing outside the restaurant and anthony bregman one of our producers from lucky story was like okay we're gonna do like a little photo shoot now and this was the first time we this is quite literally one of the first pictures of all of us together oh that's so cute yeah i love like, that we love daniel immediately look at us like hugging on him the chemistry is amazing between all three, three of you. Um, and okay, lastly, I had to sneak in a Nancy question because I love Nancy Drew. You like Nancy so, Drew? So much. It is, I'm so sad that it's over right now. We're in hiatus. Um, oh, yeah, you, have you been watching? Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. I live tweeted every Wednesday. It's fantastic. Um, this is a photo of you guys all hugging. Um, oh. and I, and I wanted to know the story behind that because you guys are literally the best cast ever and you're so kind to your fans. Emma. And so. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my goodness. So this, um, I don't know if you remember the episode where Nancy almost dies in the whisper box. Yes. Massive episode. Yeah. Yep. So after running through that hallway to save Nancy, I mean, sawdust flying everywhere, Madison and I bumping into things <laughs> and Kennedy just looking busted from being in the whisper box. Yes. Um, we all literally just hugged each other because we were like, thank God we all just got through that never ending scene. And uh, one of our crew members snapped that of us. Oh, I love that. You guys are the best. Well, thank you so much for chatting with me. It was Emma, so thank amazing. you so much. Thank you um, for watching Nancy True and supporting the half of it. I appreciate that. Uh, you're amazing. I love you so much. Both are amazing. And I can't wait for people to see this movie. It's so good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Emma.